So I've always been somebody who's dabbled in a bit of cold water swimming here and there through the winter season. But last year when we landscaped the back garden, we put this stock tank in and used it as a cold water plunge tank that I've been kind of doing every day now since about September. Um, and we also built the sauna, which you can see at the side there, but you'll see more of that later. So we decided to make the most of the sunny morning and go and have breakfast on the headland and we drove down to one of our favourite little spots at Little Fistral and um, threw some essentials, some sausages into the back of the landy and headed down. How lush is this? So at the back end of last year, we approached a company called The Ply Guys and asked whether they would be interested in building us a custom pull-out drawer system for the Defender. This company usually works with VWs, T4s, T5s, um, but they took on the challenge and were really happy with what they've created. This stove is by a company called Camping Gas, and if you look just under the pan where the pan supports are, you'll see those little dotted wind deflectors, and these are game changing. Um, we are a family who cooks on the headland in all seasons, in all weathers, and um, having the wind to battle with is often quite problematic when you're trying to cook something over an open flame. So these have been really game changing for us and meant that we can kind of extend the season and increase our opportunities to get out with the kids on the headland, eating outdoors, doing exactly the kind of things that we love no doing. Um, so there's definitely more modern stoves on the market in terms of appearance and there's definitely smaller and possibly even lighter stoves on the market too. But I am a big fan of this simply because of that wind deflecting pan support system that they've got. Darling. Little fishing boat pulling up his lobster pups. We woke up the next day and the weather was completely different to the day previously. It was wet, it was wild, it was miserable very miserly and very Cornish. We decided to come up to Pentire Headland, that's the Lewinick Lodge in the background there that you can see, and we decided to make a hot chocolate. making this hot chocolate and this cup of tea in our jet boil. We've had the jet boil for about three years now. For 10 years. Three years and we love it. We use it for everything. It's great for like making some quick noodles for the kids. Quick cups of tea, nothing boils water faster. We really enjoy it. add the milk into Osea's hot chocolate and then here is my little hack it's just one of these AeroPress oh no the battery's running out Osea <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna get much froth tonight oh dear oh no it's kicking in it's kicking in oh it's working now Oh, there we go. Oh, no, it's fading out again. Oh, it's coming back. There we go. There you go, Piggy. Just test it first. Make sure it's not too hot. Well, it has been absolutely pouring with rain all day today. So we are just heading to our friend Joe's house. He's got a house overlooking the harbour. He's one of the local fishermen. Him and his son, Leon, have got a couple of boats between them. We always get all our lobsters from them all through the summer, or well, the spring and summer. Um, and we quite often come back from the harbour with a, a basket full of lobsters on the front seat. Um, so looking forward to that season again when that all kicks off properly because there's nothing better than a lobster on the barbecue. They're going to have 
chat with him about what else he's seeing in the waters at the moment, a lot of, and have a look at this rock salmon that he's got. Now, rock salmon have been on the endangered list for a while, um, but every fisherman round here will tell you that it is far from endangered. It is, um, you know, there's, there's so many, so much stock of it at the moment. It's, like, our fish stocks are just huge of it down here and we've been eating it and um, because all the fishermen have been saying that the reason why it's on the endangered list is because there wasn't enough money um, for them to conduct a study to reassess the status of rock salmon anyway that reassessment of its status has now been done and rock salmon has now apparently moved off the endangered list and onto the sustainable list. So it now means that we can eat it legitimately guilt-free. Um, so we're gonna go, we're gonna go and get some fish. But I've just had a quick look online at the Cornwall Seafood Guide and it's still showing it on the list of fish that you should avoid. So I'm gonna have a chat with Joe and see what he has to say about that because he's obviously a lot better informed on that sort of thing than I am. Anyway, we're just pulling into the harbour now, so. Um, I'll just get that. It's supposed to be changed, it's just pain. So we've just yeah, got yeah. our rock salmon. I was just talking to Joe. Yeah, it's a dog, isn't it? I was just chatting to Joe and he said that he's spoken to the guy who does all the research and they, they definitely have recategorized rock salmon and done the research into it and they've proved it to be now sustainable um but it doesn't appear that they've updated their website yet so since filming this i have been in touch with matt slater at the cornwall's good seafood guide and he has confirmed to me that rock salmon has now made its way onto the sustainable fish list and their website has been now updated to reflect that but one thing he did say is that you do have to be careful because rock salmon is a catch-all phrase that covers many different species that include smooth hound nurse hound and spiny dogfish and it is only spiny dogfish that has been found to be sustainable I've just got home and I'm gonna turn these um, lovely fillets of rock salmon that we picked up from Joe earlier into just some fish goujons for the kids. And um, annoyingly, I've got home and I've realized that we've got no eggs and I don't have time to nip out because I've got to be at gymnastics um, very soon. So I'm gonna use melted butter, which wouldn't be my normal way of doing it. Normally I'd do it very simply with some, um, some flour, with some salt and pepper, coat it in that, dip it in the egg, dip it in the panko, um, nothing special, um, but I'm gonna use butter tonight. Um, so yeah, just do it really simple and serve it with some peas for the kids. <laughs> medium heat until they were nice and brown on one side and then just kept flipping them until they were golden all over and then when I took them off the heat I put them onto some kitchen roll to let them drain um, from the oil and then served them with some peas for the kids. This is the fish that we got from Joe. This fishy. Mm. What's the fish called? It's called a rock salmon. Hi. It's part of the shark family. The next day we drove down to the Gannel Estuary which leads out to Crantock Beach and decided to do a spot of foraging um, because OC had seen this nettle and lemon cake that she wanted to make so we thought we'd give it a go. This is us crossing over the Gannel Estuary Bridge and onto the um, marshland. It is worth noting that these estuaries flood on spring tides and on high tides you can't get back over the bridge. So definitely look at the tide table before you head down there. Having 
much luck finding any primrose flowers at the moment. Um, there's another spot just up here, a little clearing, that I think we might have some success with. Um, we're doing okay on the nettle front, but I think we might have to switch the primroses up for some gorse flower and decorate the cake with them instead, as there's plenty of gorse flower around. So my next bit of investment for the Landy is definitely a shower, a pressurised shower system that would hopefully fit on the roof rack. Um, I think I'm definitely going to have to get that in place for this summer. As you can see, in a few minutes we are going to be using the um, front runner water tank that we have permanently on top of our roof and I just undo the tap and then just kind of use it as a bit of a shower for the kids. I also have just like a little hand pump sprayer that works just to kind of dusting sand off and stuff. I'm really happy for the kids to be in the mud but I don't really want the mud in the landy because that stuff accumulates quick. So try and keep the landy as clean as possible by hosing the kids down beforehand. So there's plenty of different shower systems on the market at the moment um, but if any of you have got any particular experience with some please do comment below and let me know um, I'm particularly keen on those tanks that sit on the roof rack and then you fill them with your hose and that the hose system pressurizes them and then they've got a shower head on that you can use I'm not necessarily too bothered about heated um, but yeah, if any of you've got any experience with those kind of shower systems, do let me know which brands I need to be looking at, which systems you found helpful. I am all ears. How are you two doing? Mommy, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. Okay, we'll go and get some food now. Look at this. Anyone know what that is? Oh, anyone know what that is? That is a Lords and Lady leaf, very highly toxic, and it was tucked in between here. This is why, this is why you go through your foraging finds with meticulous detail before you pulverize them. So I'm not gonna share the recipe for this because I think the end product could definitely be improved. 
Um, it's a lettum, lemon and nettle cake, um, but I think the cake could do with being a little bit more lemony. So I think next time what I'm gonna do is just use my normal lemon drizzle cake recipe and just try and throw some nettles in for extra nutrition right, for the kids. Yeah. Although with this amount of sugar and butter in, you can hardly yeah. claim it's a nutritious meal. Yeah. But um, it was a nice cake, but it was it was quite a moist, quite a dense one, and I think the texture can definitely be improved. So I won't share the recipe, um, but here's the general process that we followed. Ta da! I am well chuffed with that. Really chuffed. Last little bit of afternoon sun in the garden. The cake came out all right. It's quite a moist cake, which is nice. Yeah. Don't touch it, don't touch it, darling. Be gentle with it, because sometimes they lose their tail if they feel like they're threatened. So just let it roll around and then you can keep a good look at it. Aww. It's nice, isn't it? Well done for being so gentle with it, OC. The following day went around to Joe and Becky's house. We decided to go and go for our first paddle um, of the season. It was a bit cold, it was a bit windy, a tad ambitious, but we decided to do it anyway because we're always really keen to get out in the water as early as we can. There's long winters here. Um, but yes, yeah, so we decided to go for a paddle down the gannel at sunset. Hopefully catch the sunset. There's a couple of people out on the water. It's a bit of a cold one tonight. We might regret this when we get out on the water. So Becky, wise one, has come in her wetsuit. Prepared. So prepared. Um, <laughs> prepared for a day out on the water. Um, failure. <laughs> me on the other hand, um, my wetsuit has not been worn. I didn't know if I wore it last summer. I don't even think I wore it last summer. So my, mine's so deep in the garage that I would have to do about 50 million dump runs to clear the garage out to even get to mine. So I've literally squeezed my body into this. I am not in a wetsuit, but it is not my intention to get wet. Famous last words, we'll see. Well, it's the first time using this little pump. According to Lee, according to Lee, I just press it on, turn the bar up to one. Oh. Oh. And press go. Ooh. Well, we have action. So first time trying the pump out, the electric pump. It's not as fast as I would have thought it was going to be. Becky's gonna do the manual. You just twist it on, put it in. Yeah, then twist. There you go, there we that's go. it. Right, right. Um, <laughs> go on, Becky. See if you can I beat- I wish I'd do this before I put my wet suit fully on. See if you can beat the pump. Okay, I think you've won. <laughs> what the? Lee and his bloody gadgets. What I tell you, it'll be the death of me. Are you go manual. Yeah, I'm. I'm going manual. When we got home, Lee tested the pump on blowing up his car tyres and it seemed to work fine. So we think it's the connector between the pump and the paddleboard. Um, but it didn't work on the day, but I'll have to give it a go another time. So at the moment, we just stuck with the hand pump. Well, we finally got it up by hand pump, which was a lot easier. And off we go. Well, mission successful. First paddle of the year we're riding into the sunset the sunset's in about 45 minutes 
Oh no, Mayday! Becky's paddles broke. <laughs> I'll come and rescue you, hold on. That looks fun. So what's happened to your paddle? Watch. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's... Well, it is very windy tonight. <laughs> It's, um, it's pretty windy, um, but good, good workout for the arms, um, but no standing up today because that means that we're a sail, so get down low so that the wind has less, less resistance to push against and we might actually be able to make it home at some point maybe. Becky's going that direction and I'm going this direction, I need to stop filming and head around the other way. But this is the Ganol Harbour, well, it's not really a harbour. Estuary leads down to Crantop Beach down there. Definitely not going that far down tonight because that's like that looks like that boat out of Jaws. You know the first one when they pull up to it and then they see they dive down and there's like a human face hanging out with its eyeball hanging out. That's like I'm incoming into this one. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely I can't paddle and obviously film at the same time. Um, but and we're not going to paddle all the way down to Crantock today because the wind is blowing this way and we will get down there very quickly but we won't be able to get back and we're about to lose sunlight very quickly so I need to put my arms into action. When you live in Cornwall you've got to learn to find the charm and the wonder in nature in all its elements throughout all its seasons otherwise you're only going to live for the six weeks of the summer. So this is a life well lived, out in the grey and the murky and the wind. Becky, why are you going that way? This way's deeper, there's like a channel here. Hello, is it? Hello. Now back home to the sauna. Becky's husband Joe is waiting for us there and Lee's already in there. I've just got a text on my watch saying that the, sa the sauna is up to temperature. So I'm looking forward to diving straight in because I am cold. So that's it for this week, guys. This is my first little vlog that I've ever posted before. So please do be kind in the comments. I'm learning lots. Um, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna commit to posting a new video each week. So let me know what you wanna see. Do you wanna see more landy stuff? Do you wanna see more cooking? Do you wanna see more lifestyle? Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you want to see and I'll be sure to create content that inspires you all and answers some of your questions or maybe just shows you a little bit more of the Cornish lifestyle. But anyway, that's it for this week. Please do like and subscribe. It really encourages me to make more videos as I see little subscribers coming through during the week. So please do not forget to hit the subscribe button.